Hey, what's going on YouTube? It's been for One Cast Fishing. Right now, I'm actually out of my lake scanning it using my down imaging technology on my Hummingbird Helix. You know, down imaging is a great piece of technology because you use those higher frequencies to go give you those crystal clear images. So you can separate fish, standing timber down here. In fact, there's a couple probably white perch or crappie down here on this little drop off here in about 15 feet of water. So it's a great piece of technology and this is our third video in the series. The first one we talked about sonar basics, then we talked about traditional sonar and again this one's all going to be about down imaging uh, technology because if you understand how down imaging works you can apply that with the other sonar technologies to be more efficient in the water. So stay tuned. We're going to get into everything you need to know about down imaging technology and make sure you like and subscribe and uh, we'll see you and we'll talk about it in a few minutes. All right guys, so as you can see, I'm pulled back into a pocket here again. And I apologize, the video is a couple days late. Um, I wanted to get this out a few days ago, but it's been rainy here, it's been cold and windy. In fact, it's windy out in the main lake today, so I had to, you know, I pull in the pocket here. So hopefully the audio is okay with this video. So if you watched my other videos, you know, two weeks ago, we roughly, or two videos ago, we talked about the basics of sonar. The last video was about traditional sonar. And again, today is about down imaging technology. You can call it down imaging, clear view, down scan, down view. There's a lot of different names out there depending on the manufacturer. But ultimately they give you those crystal clear images that gives you a new perspective under the water. So I've seen fish arches or, or color blotches. You can see a, a picture-like image. So it has done a lot for, for us being able to find fish and structure out in the water. It's a great piece of technology. You know, last week when we talked about the, the traditional sonar, you know, we talked about the, the cone of coverage with that. So again, the traditional sonar, that signal is emitted at a particular angle and you have to get it in your manufacturers to understand what that is per frequency, but it emits and it gets larger as it goes down and it forms a cone. You have a cone of coverage and that base down there is an actual circle um, that, that's actually covered by the transducer. We talked about that the higher the frequency is, the smaller that cone gets and you get less coverage area. Now down imaging technology uses much higher frequencies than traditional sonar. When they first came out, you know, they used 455 kilohertz. And in fact, many uh, manufacturers, you can still select that option. You go in your settings. Uh, my Garmin GT54, uh, GT54 UHD transducer behind me uses 800 kilohertz. My, my Hummingbird uses 1.2 megahertz for the mega imaging. So it's a much higher frequency, which means there's more waves per period which means more information can be sent back and forth and you have a lot more information generating those crystal clear images. Um, hang on a second. I don't know why, but my trolling motor was going haywire behind me, moving too much, so I had to fix that. So again, where was I? Okay, much, much higher frequencies for the down view or down imaging technology. But when that signal comes out of this transducer, it, it is not a cone like traditional sonar. It comes out looking more like a triangle. So that signal is, is shot at a particular angle below the boat and off to the sides, looking, and the best way to describe it is again like a triangle. Now you have to get back into your manufacturer's manual to understand what angle that is. So if my Garmin with the GT54 transducer, for 800 kilohertz, it's at 60 degrees, which is the same as that lower frequency traditional sonar we talked about, but 60 degree uh, beam angle. For my hummingbirds, it's actually 75 degrees with a 1.2 megahertz with the mega imaging. So you have to get to understand that. We'll talk about how that affects what you see here in a second. But you have to understand that this angle is going to be much larger than, even, than your higher frequency traditional sonar. Again, we talked about the traditional sonar. It's a cone of coverage. This is a triangle. It is a slice of the water column. So you're not seeing in front of the boat, you're not seeing behind the boat, you're seeing just what's below the boat and slightly off to the sides. Now, it is true, and again, you have to get in your manufacturers this, most of the widths of these columns, and if I were to turn this to the side, you'll see that slice there. Most of these are under one degree in width. And why it's technically true, the further and further you go out, because if you would shoot a one degree angle, Right, imaginary lines coming out towards you, the farther and further you go, the, the wider that actually gets. 
but for less than one degrees, it's negligible. I guess the best way to describe this, in the Army, we, we do land navigation. So, so we get our point, we plot it on a map, we get our azimuth to it with a protractor, then we, we shoot that azimuth with a compass. If our point is 300 meters away and we're looking for a sign on a tree in the woods, and our azimuth to get there from where we are is 20 degrees, if we were to walk 19 degrees, one degree off, at 300 meters we come up there and that point's going to be probably three or four feet to the left or right to us. It's going to be right there. It's, it's pretty doggone close. Now, if we were to do that for 5,000 meters, a 5K, that point, even if we're walking one degree off, could be three or 400 meters away. Now, fortunately for us bass fishermen, we don't fish 5,000 meters deep. In fact, most commercial fishermen aren't going to do that. Nothing that we really want to eat is going to live down uh, that deep. So, so it's negligible to us. You have to understand it, it is just a small slice, a small sliver of the water column that you're seeing out of the down view technology um, that's coming back to the transducer to, to generate those images. Hey, so we just talked about how this, this transducer here with down imaging technology shoots out a triangle and it's a slice of the water column. So you have to think about this transducer shooting a beam of coverage that is perpendicular to the transducer. Now how much coverage you're actually seeing is again depending upon that frequency or really the beam angle that that's emitted out of, much like traditional sonar. So again, the Garmin behind me, the GT54 transducer, 60 degree angle. Again, I'll put the formula up here so you can do the math yourself. But the rule of thumb for 60 degrees is for every foot of water that you're fishing, that's that line, that perpendicular line across equals that, equals that depth. So if you're 30 feet of water, that line is 30 feet across down here, which means it's, you got 15 feet of coverage on either side of the transducer. This is different than traditional sonar, if you remember, is a circle. So if you see something in 30 feet of water, it could be 15 feet away from the transducer in any direction, right? But with down imaging technology, you know it's either below, to the left, or right of the transducer. You don't have to guess if it's, if it's at an angle this way or an angle this way or if it's behind you, right? Um, or even in front of you for that matter. Uh, the fact of the matter is it kind of helps you narrow in. If we see it on your, your sonar, your down imaging technology, it's, it's to the left or the right or below the boat or a transducer. It, it, it's really that simple. Now, with the, uh, the Humminbird Mega Imaging, that's 75 degrees. So that could maybe be up to 20 feet on either side of the transducer on that perpendicular line. So that can help you narrow it in. If you, if you see a piece of structure or cover or fish, you can mark your waypoint, and then you know you just kind of have to fish that perpendicular line. In fact, you could mark your waypoint, spin your boat around, and come up actually parallel to that line and make parallel casts going down, and you can hit that entire line relatively efficiently. So now that we've talked about the, 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 it's not a cone of coverage, right? let's call it a triangle of coverage, a down view technology and down scan technology and how it's really perpendicular line of a slice of the water column below and to slightly left and right of the transducer. And last week we talked about traditional sonar and how it is an actual cone of coverage. Let's combine the two because if you combine the two technologies and I always run both on, on the same graph. So I, I've got two screens on my Humminbird, one I run side imaging, the other I run on my mapping my traditional and my down view technology. My traditional, I usually run at a higher frequency unless I'm fishing really shallow and, and then I'll, uh, I'll scale that down a little bit so I can get more coverage area. But I run both my down view or down scan and then my traditional at the same time. Because that gives me a lot of information of where I need to place my waypoints and where I need to fish. So let's say you got your transducer and you see your traditional sonar coverage here. Now let's add our down scan technology to it as well. And you see the down scan is obviously larger. Now if you see something on your down scan technology, on your down scan image, but not in your traditional sonar, that means that that piece of structure, that fish, that, that, that standing piece of timber is outside that cone of coverage and to the left and right of the boat or left or right of the transducer. It's not off at an angle, so you can be a lot more precise. Mark your waypoint, you know you got to fish to the left or to the right. It's a lot less guessing and fan casting. Or what you can do is you can spin your boat around to the left and to the right, and the ideal situation is you find 
that piece of structure, that school of fish, whatever you're looking for, on both your down view technology and then on your, um, your traditional sonar as well. That's almost the holy grail. You mark your waypoint, then you know you're pretty much doggone right on top of it. And you can back off of it and make your cast there. And within the first couple of casts, you can hit that piece of structure or cover. And so that's why I always run both. Combine the benefits of both technology to narrow down what you're fishing to be more precise for your cast. And then you can waste a lot less time fishing that spot if you're not getting a bit. And if you have multiple spots, you can pull up there, boom, 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 make 10, 15 casts and move on to the next point. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it gives you some more information of how down imaging technology works, what you're actually seeing below the boat. Um, with that said, how you can you incorporate your down imaging with your traditional sonar to be more precise and efficient with your time on the water. So again, if you enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe, hit the like button, comment, share the video, you know, you know do all the things, all the calls of action. Um, but just make sure you're staying safe right now out there um, with everything that's going on. Hopefully you're getting time on the water, practice, practicing your social distancing. Um, but next video in this series is going to be uh, side imaging technology, so hopefully you enjoyed it. I'll see you guys out there next time, and remember, a lunker, one cast away.